to yet another interesting segment. But in this segment, we're going to focus on autonomic pharmacology. So we are trying to understand those pharmacological agents that were their influence or the activity of the autonomic nervous system. So like we all know that the autonomic nervous system is divided into two, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So, but in this segment, we're going to focus, focus only on what the sympathetic nervous system. So those pharmacological agents that influence the activity of the sympathetic nervous system, they are divided into two. We have what the adrenergic agonists and the adrenergic antagonists. So these adrenergic agonies are also known as what the sympathomimetic drugs. Why are they called sympathomimetic drugs? Because they imitate what the what they imitate what the uh, the uh, the activities of what the nervous system. Understand? Their 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 administration brings about pharmacological effect, which is similar to the activation of what the sympathetic nervous system. While the sympathomimetic drugs or the adrenergic antagonists. They are just pharmacological effect, uh, agents which brings about effect which is similar to the inhibition of what the sympathetic nervous system, guys. So, but before we go deeply into the uh, uh, studies, I will want us to understand the normal neurophysiology uh, of the autonomy of the sympathetic nervous system as well as what the normal neurobiochemistry of the sympathetic nervous system. So let's take a uh, let's take a look at this particular example. Let's assume you have a friend, and this friend is faced with a danger. So what does the sympathetic nervous system do in order to help your friend at this particular situation? So first of all, we all know that what let's say let's let's assume that it's a dog that is about to uh, to bite your friend. So when the dog start barking, your friend picks up this the barking of this uh, of this dog through what the auditory pathways. So what actually happens is that uh, let's say this this the, the Let's assume this is our cortex. Of course, your cortex is not rectangular in shape, but let's take this as an example. This is our cortex. And then, when your friend is faced with this danger, he picks up what the barking of the dog through the auditory pathways. So the, the sound is being carried to the what? To the temporal lobe. That means we have what sound coming. Let's assume the sound comes to the what? To the auditory pathways. And then after uh, 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 coming through the auditory pathways, it gets to the what to the temporal lobe, guys. So when it gets to the temporal lobe, the temporal lobe will now send impulses to the limbic system. The limbic system. Okay, now this is one 